the 20th. Mr. Mays? Present. Ms. Poplo? Present. Mr. Nelson? Present. Mm -hmm. Mr. Winfrey? Mr. Winfrey? Mr. Winfrey? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Ms. Van Buren? Present. Mr. Kincaid? Present. Thank you. We will have the Pledge of Allegiance and our prayer by um, Councilwoman Galloway. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you for this um, season that we are in. Lord, I lift up the, the issues and the concerns in, in this community. I lift up those that are in need of housing. I lift up those that are in need of financial resources, not just the city, but Lord, there are some individuals that you would never know that they stand in need, but they are. And so I'm just asking that you would continue to allow those that you have given a heart to give to be a blessing to them. Lord, we lift up our mayor individually, God. I thank you for her leadership. And God, I thank you for surrounding her with the right people. I thank you for giving her favor on the federal and the state level for the need of this community. We bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If we could remain standing for a moment silent in prayer for uh, Miss Rosemary Cheney, who passed last night, was a very dedicated and faithful member of our church and in our community, so real estate for over 50 years in this community. A person Mr. who's Nelson. very uh, very dear uh, to my heart. Yes, uh, Mr. Nelson, mm -hmm. I, uh, I have two of my constituents. Uh -huh. um, well, one is a former constituent because he's in the first ward. Uh -huh. But Mr. William Burns, whom I met in 2005, uh -huh. and um, he passed. And, Mr. Burns mentored me from 2005, from the day he met me, mm -hmm. up until his home going. Mr. William Burns and uh, Mr. John Piles, Jr. So I uh, have those two that okay. I have been knowing since 2005, and they have worked and walked with me until their home going, so okay. thank and we, you. Mr. Chair. Yes. And certainly Mr. Alex Campbell, hey, Mr. Campbell. was a mentor of mine pillar of this community, Falls Avenue Baptist Church. And also, if we can remember, uh, uh, Reverend Neil Robeson, one of our strong leaders in our community, his mother died on Friday night, and then on Sunday night, his father died. And so let's keep them in our prayers, okay? Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Let me read something for your hearing, and then we will move on. Any persons that persist in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code Section 3112, disorderly conduct, disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents a peaceful and orderly conduct of this meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting this meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Ms. Madam Clerk, we have a public hearing. Can you read for our hearing what this is about? Yes, uh, the first public hearing is in reference to it's an ordinance uh, pursuant to uh, the Flint City Charter Section 8-201 mm -hmm. regarding the limitations on a franchise on franchising. And um, let's see here, let me just take a little piece. It's an amendment to ex for the extension thereto to provide for the operation, maintenance, and reconstruction of a cable communication system within the city of Flint and ordaining the franchise agreement between the City of Flint and Comcast Cable. Uh, is hereby granted according to the terms and conditions set forth therein and is modified by the provisions set forth for such an operation in Chapter 15 of the Code of the City of Flint. Okay. Are there any speakers for this public hearing? Mr. Woodson. This is about uh, Comcast, right? Correct. I have a question. Uh, I was just reading this. It's the ordinance. All right. 
the audience, right? Uh, why is it uh, Comcast Cablevision of Flint Inc.? Is this a, uh, a franchise as far as a branch of Comcast? Or is it Comcast, the actual company? Uh, because I'm seeing Comcast, and then it says formerly Comcast Cablevision Corporation. I think it changed names. I, I, I've asked Miss Will, and the only thing that we have Mr. Gardner here, maybe he can answer that for you. Can we do that after the public hearing? And then also, uh, why is it that I keep hearing people saying that um, they're going to add on what they give to us? We shouldn't have to. Uh, pay them to use our streets and everything else. If they're going to use our streets, they should be paying us, and that's it, bottom line, uh, as far as giving us money back. And the, uh, the customers shouldn't have to pay for it. I mean, if you have to change the ordinance, I mean, they never answered any of the questions that was asked uh, the last two times that they were here. And I don't see how we still going to end, how you all, going to still pass ordinances and resolutions when they haven't even answered the questions that have been asked. Thank you. Thank you. Any more speakers for this public hearing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, Annette O'Malley, 713 Thompson Street. Uh, I'm here to speak specifically to the portion of the franchise agreement that pertains to public access. Um, our community is wo woefully behind other cities and communities around the state in taking advantage of the opportunities that public access would have to both inform and celebrate this community. Um, if we could expand our public access, we could not only inform the citizenry of the meetings that you have, the council meetings and the uh, committee meetings, which I'm happy to be able to access, but it would also give us an opportunity to celebrate, and when I say that, I'm thinking of some of the things such as the wonderful local performances by our, uh, our youth, or some of the sports and things. Um, I'm a retired educator, administrator from Beecher, and I would love to share with you what goes on in Bucktown every March when we start winning those state basketball championships. So those are opportunities that we're not taking advantage of, but also more importantly, the opportunity to inform the citizenry on other issues. If we look only at the water crisis, um, if you are able to attend a meeting that's held around town to hear what's going on or know exactly, then that's great. But if you're not, because you have other obligations, you're kind of reduced to that two or three minutes that you get on public television or on the commercial television every night. Those meetings could be rebroadcast. I could know that I could tune in at a certain time and find out what is the update this week or this month on the water crisis. I could access that through YouTube at a time that's convenient for me. So I've heard this council often speak of transparency. I think this is another opportunity for us to really look at what that means to our citizens and use this tool that we need. Um, there's also some opportunity for youth. I mentioned I'm an educator. You know, there are uh, people in other communities that are now training their young people with cameras and, and editing equipment and things, and they're getting those jobs that are in the local television stations when those things come up. So I understand that there could be a question about the percentage or what can be dedicated or where it might come from. So all I would ask this council tonight is as you take up this franchise agreement, that you consider um, asking and in fact including that this public access needs to be negotiated and clearly stated before this 10-year contract runs out. We don't want to wait 10 years to agree to this. I think that Comcast can be, you know, agreeable to that and that we just ask that this public access piece be investigated and that it be used to the very best benefit of the citizenry that it can. Thank you. Thank you. Any more speakers of this public hearing? <clears throat> Any more speakers of this public hearing? All right, Ariel. Good evening, Council. Mr. Ariel Mitchell. I'm talking about this Comcast. 
television program. I want Comcast to know that this is the time limit. This is the last day for when he get when we work the deal with the Comcast. That I want to I want to be reimbursed and hook me up with my cable since they unhooked it when they told me it was, it was free to hook it up, but they didn't give me a chance to because I'm on fixed income and my I was going to pay the bills after hook it up. But like you said, I want them after Paul Harvey Paul take over the whole company after this, after you people's decision on this Comcast Cup, because I want reimbursement with hooking my cable TV back up. Do that for the record, for Mitchell. Um, Any more speakers on this public hearing? Any more speakers on this public hearing, Mr. Harrington? Good evening, Council. Good evening. My name is Paul Herring. Do I need to give my address? 525 Mason Street, and you guys know why I'm here. Let's ask Comcast a couple questions. This is a 10-year contract, right? Let's ask Comcast how saturated is Flint. Are we 100% wired for Comcast? Question one. Question two, if we're not, over the next 10 years, do you plan on wiring 100% of Flint? And if, if not, why not? The third question is, um, I guess is more of a statement. I understand that the city's, uh, the city's position is that they don't want to accept the 2% or whatever Comcast is willing to offer right now. I believe it's 0 0.035. 3, 0, 0, 0.35. Because they, they say that there's a burden, an additional burden on the city to come up with the, the money for the salary and the staff. I don't know how many of you had a chance to look at the uh, Genesee County Media Center proposal that I gave you, but we got that covered. We got plans for that. I mean, besides the fact that the city could donate half a percent of the 5% that they're getting to help public access because they truly benefit it. Besides the fact that the city could designate 70 grand or 50 grand from the CDBG funds to operate public access. Besides the fact that we could apply for grants through Mott Community College, or not Mott Community College, but Mott and other organizations here in, the, in Flint, and besides the fact that I've been doing it already for 30 years for free, or darn near free, I don't see that as being an issue. I think the smart move is to collect whatever Comcast will give us, and I encourage you to write not only the 5% in, but the 2% in. I think it's smart for us to collect whatever we can get for Comcast and stockpile it up. Let's store it up because there will be a day between now and 10 years from now when we want to do this for our students, when we'll want to do this for our seniors. If the administration is concerned about not representing their constituency accurately, well, let's ask Comcast to buy us some time. Let's say, hey, give us a letter that'll say that we can reopen this part of the contract any time between now and then. That'll give the administration enough time to, to poll their constituencies, like I have. 418 people so far on Facebook have said, do it. But I don't know if they're just being nice, because it's my page, right? I would like to talk to a lot of people in Flint. I really want to know that there's a consensus that people want this, because I don't want to do something that people don't want done. It doesn't make any sense. And I told you before, people in Flint are not afraid to pay for what they want. They just want what they pay for. You have an opportunity here, guys. You have a brilliant opportunity. One, the law is bogus from the state down. How do we challenge that law? When do we challenge that law? And who challenges that law? Well, it could be us. It could be now. It could be you. Don't sign that contract. Fill in the numbers. Fill in the numbers. Turn it in unsigned. Let's see what happens. You're not in violation of a contract. The old contract has ended. The new contract has not yet begun. Comcast is giving you less than 30 days. You guys had less than two weeks. You guys had really like eight days to look at this, to talk to your people. Is that fair for a 10-year contract? I'm going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you have a 10-year cell phone contract? 
nobody. You wouldn't even think about signing a two-year cell phone contract. Why? Because technology changes, and it changes quickly. Next week, Comcast can pull the plug on the cable, and we don't get any money off of broadband. We don't get any money off of security services. We don't get any money off of telephone. And the same trucks, the very same trucks, Scott, that deliver the cable, Eric, those very same trucks are still going to be on our road providing telephone modems and broadband services to our citizens, and we'll get zilch. When do you negotiate for that? Because you sign this contract, it'll be 10 years from now. Make them give you a letter that says, hey, we want to deal with uh, Flint in good faith. We want to be good neighbors. We want to be community partners. We're not going to be gangster on this. We're going to give you the opportunity to talk to your constituents to see if they want that 2%. We're going to give you an opportunity to look at this and do what you feel is best for our communities. We're not going to rush you. We're not going to punk you. We're going to give you the opportunity to do the right things. In all things, purely social guys, we can be as separate as the fingers, but we need to be one like the hand in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Any more speakers for this public hearing? Any more speakers for this public hearing? Good, Good evening. evening, all. Ari McCaskill, 1642 Wyoming Avenue. I just have a question with the negotiation of the contract. Is there any consideration to uh, median income in Flint? You know, what people are able to pay in over a 10 year span? Is there going to be any reinvestment in infrastructure, quality of service, accessibility to landline phones? Because for a lot of people that are on fixed income, they don't have access to it. Even though they do have an Obama phone, a lot of older people feel more comfortable using a landline. So if you're not going to have access to that, and in my neighborhood, AT&T doesn't offer landline uh, traditional uh, home phones. So if you're going to contract them or get into bed with them for 10 years, there needs to be some rules for engagement. I mean, we are Flint. We aren't a Los Angeles or a New York where you're a large economy where you're, you're vying for uh, a large amount of incomes, diverse incomes. We pretty much have the same median income indifferent to where we live in the city. So just a consideration. Can you restate your name again for the record? Ari McCaskill, A-R-I-M-C-C-A-S-K-I-L-L. -L. Thank you. Any more speakers for this public hearing? Any more speakers for this public hearing? Any more speakers for this public hearing? Public hearing is closed. Um, there was a question. There was a question um, that Mr. Woodson had. Um, is the representative from Comcast, and then I'm going to ask Mr. Branch to come briefly after he does. I got a question for you. If you can come answer that question that was asked. I got a couple questions too. For which one? Mr. Okay. Gardner. All right. I think that's Mr. Gardner. Okay. Correct. Yes. Thank you, President Nelson. You would answer, Mr. The legal yeah. entity that submitted the completed uniform video services local franchise agreement was Comcast of Flint, Inc. Okay. Mr. President. It is a subsidiary of, of Comcast. It is a publicly traded company. Okay. All right. Um, now, now, Mr. Mays has a couple of questions. Yeah, thank you, you Mr. President. Um, through you, Mr. President, to Mr. Gardner. Mr. Gardner, does all of these contracts have to be 10 years? Can it be more or less than 10 years? Public Act 480 of 2006 instructed the Michigan Public Service Commission to develop a uniform franchise. It is a 10-year franchise that was developed and instructions were to uh, use the for uniform agreement throughout the state without procedural or substantial changes. So without procedural or substantial changes. That is correct. Um, look like they want you to push that button to cut that mic on. Is that mic on? It's on? Yeah, just bring it down okay. just a little bit. So, so the 
technical term would be without any procedure or substantial changes, so they uniformly designed a 10-year contract? That is correct. That is that, in the statute. Beg your pardon? That is in the statute. That 10 years was in the statute? That is correct. Um, also, the state law, does that statute allow any time where you can go back in and update or renegotiate on either end, either Comcast or the city? I do not know of specific uh, provisions. I don't believe so. Beg your pardon? I don't believe so. But if state or federal law changed, that would mandate an update or an amendment or a change? It may, depending on the changes. So it m might not be in the language of the contract, but a state law or federal change might do that within the 10 years? Potentially. Potentially. And then um, this um, December 16th date that we heard about, um, a couple weeks or so ago, um, this contract has not been put into effect yet, correct? The December 16th date is 30 days after we submitted a completed franchise agreement to the city. Beg your pardon? Repeat your question, repeat your answer. Could, could you repeat speak? your question? Yeah, the, sept, the December 16th date, that was as you described, that was the 30 days after you had submitted it. You submitted the proposed contract about mid-November. That is correct. And according to the statute, from what I understood, correct me if I'm wrong, if the city had not took action within 30 days, somewhere around December the 16th, then um, the submitted proposed contract could have went into effect. By operation of the statute, it be de became deemed effective. It became deemed effective. Deemed approved, that is correct. So is that contract effective now? What's the date? We would still like to work with the city to have an agreement. So, so that the city can continue to, to so that the city can continue to receive the five percent franchise so fees. So, as of December sixteenth, was five percent in the blank for the franchise fee? The agreement would have been deemed approved as we submitted it. So it and would have been without anything in the franchise fee or the peg fee provisions. So you didn't see 5% go into the franchise fee prior to the 16th? Correct. Um, and so when but you again, say- we would still like to work with the city to come to an agreement. So when you say you would like to work with the city, you're saying that we can still put the 5% in at this date and time. That is correct. And Comcast. And we accept that. Point of order. Yes. Um, Councilman Nelson, um, and maybe the records can be checked. It seems as though when we voted last week on the contract, this council voted to have that 5% included in before it went into effect as a, as a way of protecting ourselves. Me and the ourselves. city attorney just, uh, I just asked her that question, and she said that is true, and that's why he's using the phrase, they're still willing uh, to work with the city, because we voted uh, oh. that in. Okay? Thank you. All right. And so that would also allow if um, the administration and or the council continue to work, we still have an opportunity as it relates to the PEG fee of 0.35. That is correct. Um, Mr. President, at this time, mm -hmm. I don't have any other um, questions or discussions for Mr. Gardner. I met um, with Mr. Gardner 
and mm -hmm. the committee meetings. I met earlier today, mm -hmm. um, and it was also a lady, Mrs. Leslie Brogan, mm -hmm. who I think is here, who mm -hmm. is a senior director of government and regulatory affairs with Comcast. So um, at this time, um, I have no further questions. Okay. okay, any other of my colleagues have anything? Yes, yes sir. Councilman Winfrey. And, and even though I, I heard what uh, and agree with uh, Paul Herring, I think that we ought to be fair. When Mr. Gardner said that they still want to work with the city, I think it's evident in what they did today because I wasn't expecting a meeting and then I was called to a meeting and that meeting really didn't have to happen. Now, again, I, I, I agree with Mr. Mr. Herring, but let's, let's be fair about this thing. So, Mr. Gardner, what, I say, what I'm saying in short, and I'm not afraid to say it around anybody, is I appreciate it and what you said is consistent with what you did because I wasn't expecting a meeting today and you said that at the meeting and that was the reason that the meeting was called is because you want to work with the city. So I appreciate that. You and Mrs. Broken doing that. Thank you. Okay, now, okay, anything else, any of my colleagues? Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Branch, if I can just have you just for a second, then I promise you I just have a quick question for you. And if you don't know it, I, you know, I understand. Um, to your knowledge, uh, is the administration considering um, the point three five at all? Uh, I know we had some talks, me and Mr. Jones, but have there been any more talks since the last council meeting? Um, to my knowledge, there's not been any more talk since the last council meeting, and I believe that Mr. Jones has stated that he was willing to work with the council on that, mm -hmm. but uh, to my knowledge, okay. that okay. has not taken place. If, if you can do me one favor, tomorrow, when you communicate with him in the morning, uh, if me and you and him can sit down very briefly tomorrow um, and, and just uh, run over a couple things, okay, we'll uh, I, would, I would appreciate that if you can. Uh, tomorrow. Okay. okay. For sure. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Miss, Madam Clerk. Mr. Oh, Mr. Kincaid. I just, I just want to make a point. Uh -huh. um, the reason this is on the agenda tonight is because <coughs> the reason this ordinance is on the agenda tonight uh -huh. is <laughs> I think it's on. It's, it's not, not working. working. It's not working. But Ms. Brown and I, through our, my experience and her knowledge, we had a discussion prior to a few weeks ago about when this issue came up to make sure that we had everything in place. And I raised the question in committee because it's not just about the contract, it's about the ordinance. And it's about the ordinance for us to be able to make sure that the franchise fee can be collected. And that, that's the purpose of the ordinance. And that's why it's very important that we adopt this ordinance this evening. And my concern has always been in the um, agreement that we levy the amount that we um, potentially can in a franchise fee so that we can use those dollars in our general fund. And at our last council meeting, I think I proposed a motion to make sure that the 5% franchise fee was in the contract. And I think all of my colleagues, if I recall right, voted and supported that. So really what, what we're doing tonight is we're adopting this ordinance. And this ordinance allows us, and Ms. Wheeler, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it allows us to be able, under our ordinance and our law, to be able to collect the franchise fee, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So, that's why the ordinance is here. The contract is, we, we've talked about the contract. I wanted to make sure that 5% was in there. We voted on it. That's right. It's there. I don't care what anybody says. We're the, we're the policy makers of this city and we adopted that policy. So if 
There's no other discussion from the audience, um, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and move on the adoption of Ordinance 160548, and then we can discuss it and vote on it. Um, it's a motion on the floor. Is there any support? Support. support. Been moved and supported. Discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Mr. Mays. Um, as we adopt this ordinance and we looking at subsequently some type of contract based upon the way ordinances normally go, mm -hmm. do we need to move this ordinance for immediate effect? It already is. Mm -hmm. it's already I, think, I think in the language it was already. Upon publication. Mm -hmm. Upon publication. Mm -hmm. And it requires two-thirds vote of the city council in order for that. Action. Yeah, so we could go for immediate effect. And if we get two thirds vote tonight, then we would have immediate effect mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm. Upon publication. So it doesn't mean, and I don't mean to interrupt, but I just want a point of information. The immediate effect doesn't mean it goes into effect tomorrow. It doesn't go into effect until publication, which is normally about five to seven days from now. Um, and if we did move for immediate effect, it would go into effect how long from now? 30, about three weeks. But the ordinance has been presented to us with immediate effect on exactly. it. So that's how it's been presented. 30 days. 30 days. But, it, but this has to go to the RTAP, too, okay. so all that time, you yeah. know, so it still takes And we got to include the RTAP, too, right. Councilman Mays. Yeah. Okay, so um, the language of the ordinance, I don't see immediate effect language in the ordinance. It says upon publication, which is really immediate, as soon as it's published. Oh, the ordinance really shall become effective mm -hmm. immediately upon publication following mm -hmm. adoption. Mm -hmm. That's the immediate effect. Mm -hmm. that norm, that's normal, though, isn't it? That's still good. No. no, not normal. Oh, it's not normal? Sometimes it's 30 days or whatever. Or After publication. Yes. Okay, then that would satisfy what I want. So we don't have to but worry about that. Because this has to go through the RTAB, the time frame also enters into this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So the RTAB, um, if it goes through the RTAB, then we're doing all we need to do. And whatever comes first, the chicken or the egg, that's all we can do. Right. And um, as far as that, um, December 16th um, deadline, uh, we've been running, since you brought that up, we've been on track. So I guess we'll do what we can do. And this is the ordinance. And then we'll, we don't have anything on the agenda about the contract tonight, do we? We dealt with that last time. But I still wanna circle back on that contract because I'm curious as to that um, we left a, we left a point three five blank. Did we vote it up or down, or did we just leave it blank? We didn't even address it. We, we, we just so I'm gonna circle back on that point three five and gauge once and for all where we at on it formally. So for right now, I'm ready to vote on the ordinance. Any more discussion? Hearing none. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays. Yes. Ms. Pompla. Yes. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no, on 160548. Mr. Mr. President, Matt. I'd like to send a referral up, if I may. Okay. I want to send a referral up to um, State Representative Sheldon Neely, mm -hmm. and I want a referral sent to State Senator Jim Annanick. Right. And I would ask that um, State Senator Annanick and State Representative Neely review Public Act 480. Right. And as it relates to this franchise agreement language, 
and that they um, either communicate with this council in our next council meeting or communicate with the president or leadership or somebody by phone because we have some concerns about the language in this state law. And when they communicate, then some of us might have some proposed changes to state law as it relates to this. Okay. So noted. Madam Clerk, that brings us to public comment. Well, we have no, one, we, one more public hearing. Another we public do? hearing. Yes, we have one more public hearing oh, regarding okay, yes. ordinance number 160550, which is an ordinance to amend chapter 24. That's true. Known as housing, mm -hmm. article one, international property maintenance code, mm -hmm. section 24-4. Um, and if you will recall, we adopted uh, an emergency ordinance that will expire in 60 days as it relates to this particular ordinance. Yeah. But this is the actual ordinance that will take effect uh, on the 61st day, day after the expiration or of the, after the 60 emergency. Days right. <clears throat> so we got public comment. Yes. Okay. Any speakers on this public hearing? I have a question for the attorney. I know in court when they say scratch, it means <laughs> take it off the record. So I see scratch right here. And what's scratched is and enforced by the city of Flint. I want to know why that is taken off and what does this ordinance here serve? What is the purpose of this ordinance? What is this ordinance taking away from the citizens or is it giving something to the citizens because, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really in detail of what this ordinance is put in to accomplish. And I know from a lot of different things in the government and the state, they like to take away a lot of freedoms, even though they think that they're doing something good. They really, uh, uh, like child support, you know, they have to dead be dads, but, uh, they end up uh, messing up a whole lot of other uh, fathers that's really trying to uh, take care of the kids. So if you can, I mean, President Nelson or someone, can you please tell me what is it that this ordinance do? What is it, does it take away some of my freedoms? Does it add to some of my freedoms? Does it give me some type of security? Or does it take away from my securities? Thank you. Okay. Any more speakers on this public hearing? Any more speakers? I am. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, speaking on this chapter if he could give his first 15. I'll give you first and last. Oh, uh, my name is L. Mitchell, and I reside at 759 East Linden Avenue in Flint, Michigan. Uh, like I was saying, chapter 15, to you, to city attorney. Forty years ago, me and my wife purchased a house on Laredo, 501 Laredo, East Laredo. It was given to me in the butt while I was working at Ch Chevrolet Truck Assembly. I came home and found that my, half of my furniture was gone and my two boys, my son was gone, and I was sitting left on my porch with me and the dog. And and about this reimbursement, about uh, this, this uh, get 30 days about replacing your family. But I was told I had to go down to City Hall and sign the paper for property, but I was five minutes late. And I've been running around Flint for 40 years. Oh. Alberta, if you hear me, this will be your Christmas present. Because when they get through judgment on this, this house situation, because I've been misplaced, I won't damage claim. But thank God to Inez, she kept me with a house ever since then, every, time, every house. Point of order. Ms. Galloway. Councilman Nelson, President Nelson, I don't know what Mr. Mitchell is referring to as far as the, the public hearing item. Oh. Ayo, you have to stick to the topic. 
Oh, this oh, is oh, the oh, topic, oh. sir. No, about not, the, uh, the housing pro the housing situation. Not not the house that you purchased or anything. That's not related to what's on the 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 ordinance that's before us now. Okay. The city of Flint. Now that's sir, something that's something this, you may want this to talk lady to been the not city attorney. Interrupting with a whole lot. Could I ask my council no, man to no, interrupt with her? Ariel, no. But sir, now listen here, sir. I want to. I get back with you, Thank uh, you. Attorney uh, Angela. Thank you. But you see what this kangaroo court Thank you, Ariel. doing, Alberta. But Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes. Any more speakers on this public hearing? Any more speakers on this public hearing? Any more speakers on this public hearing? Public hearing is closed. She Mr. said, hold on. Uh, I want to try to answer um, Mr. Woodson's question on the ordinance. Mr. Wilson. The, the ordinance um, basically allows, it, uh, it requires landlords to allow for a rental inspection to make sure the properties are up to code prior to renting them to prevent landlords from becoming slum landlords and tenants having to live in substandard housing and pay high rental rates. So this ordinance, and I have a copy of the um, comprehensive rental <laughs> inspection code, and I'll give it. I'll give it to you. But this this ordinance really protects tenants from um, being um, taken advantage of by landlords that don't live in our community and don't really care about their property. So um, that's the basis of the ordinance, and um, I have a copy of the uh, comprehensive rental inspection code. If you'd like to to look at it. Um, um, Mr. Woodson. So that's it. Thank okay. you, Mr. President. Ms. Poplar has something? Yes. Um, on the second part of this ordinance, I guess what it is, um, it's the property maintenance code. And if you go to 302.4.1, where it talks about uh, overgrowth. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to understand how does the city govern itself on this section of the ordinance um, when it says trees, hazards, bushes, or other vegetation shall not be allowed to grow over public or private driveways, sideways, sidewalks, or neighborhood properties. I'm talking about public trees and hedges that are growing over city sidewalks. Then it says the owner of such trees and bushes or hedges, once again, shall be responsible to trim the overhanging limbs to a height of 15 feet um, above grade. Once again, I'm talking about the city that has trees hanging over sidewalks all over the city that are not cut and have not been cut in 10, 15 to 20 years. Then. If the owner, which is the city again, or registered agent, fails to comply with the violation notice, so that means the city has to give itself a notice within the prescribed time, then it says the city may abate the nuisance and the owner or registered agent will be responsible for any incurred costs. So how does the city govern itself when it's in violation. That's what I want to know. I mean, how do you have this ordinance for the people and you're a violator? Mr. Branch, somebody from the city, can you answer that question? How do you govern yourself on your violations? Because for the last 15 to 20 years, if you go up Castle Lane, those trees are hanging over the sidewalk. Those are your trees. Those are your hanging trees. And they're over your city sidewalks and over the right of way, which is between the curb and the sidewalk. Then you also have bushes at intersections that belong to the city. So how does the city govern itself as far is not being a nuisance. Well, um, first of all, for this question, I believe this ordinance is related to rental property. 
and this ordinance was directed towards the owners of rental property. And since the city is not renting that property, it is owned, technically owned, by the homeowners. No, no, no. If you go back to number one, where we start overgrowth, number one on that the says page. public. The city is a public entity. Where are you looking at? I am on the uh, inspection code. Three o two point four point one overgrowth. But that's not what's being amended, right? We're just talking about it's it. On now. page eleven, Mr. Branch, can I do something? Miss yes, Willer has right somewhat a response to okay. to help you, Miss Willer. Ms. Wheel. Mrs. Wheel. Yes, ma'am. Um, the as uh, Mr. Branch was saying, it is specifically tailored for rental for the rental inspection program. What you're looking at is the International Property Maintenance Code, um, and like I said, this is a whole program to make sure that we don't have blighted properties in the city of Flint. I think what you may want to do is possibly. Um, you know, just a thought, just to send a referral, if that's your concern, um, to the Building and Safety Inspection or Development Division, because it doesn't make sense for us to go out and write ourselves a ticket. But it does make sense, like you said, to get those things straightened out. So you may need to um, send something to the appropriate department so that if there is a concern, um, that that be managed. But like I said, this in particular, the adoption of the the uh, amended comprehensive rental inspection program is for enforcement as to those who rent property to make sure there's decent, safe, and sanitary housing for those who, <coughs> who rent. Um, this was vetted not only by the Landlords Association, but also um, the Legal Services of Eastern Michigan and along with the Building and Safety Inspection Department. So. Um, like I said, we've adopted the updated International Property Maintenance Code. Previously, it was 2003. Now, we have the 2012 and administrative amendments and also the actual uh, comprehensive rental inspection program. So all these things are the city as an enforcement agency um, for the entire city. But I think separately, um, that would be something that you would probably need to make some type of complaint through that department so that they can evaluate that. Ms. Wheeler, that's all good and, and it sounds great. But the next time the city wants to bring an ordinance to us, when the city's in violation of something, I think you need to take a closer look at your ordinances because I still see the city being in violation and there's nobody overlooking your violation and that's not fair that's right. at all because we send referrals after referrals. Like I said, Castle Lane, trees have not been cut. They're overgrown. And that not just Castle Lane. I mean, they're all over the city. So our referrals are not being heard when it comes to hanging branches, which it says in this ordinance that somebody should get a fine. But the city can't find themselves, I guess. And the referrals are not being answered. So it should be some kind of way. I'm, I'm, I'm not pleased with your answer. But it's a good answer because you're an attorney and you do what you do for the city. <laughs> but I'm still saying I'm not happy with it. And we can go on. I'm going to vote for this. But when I look at the city still being in violation of its own years. ordinance, then you need to take a look before you send it out to us. And this is the really first time I really, really went through this. And when I saw this, the city's in violation of their own. They can't govern their own self. So you need to find a way to do this. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brant, I thank you. And you, you know I will have a conversation with you this week about cutting branches and trees. All right. Mr. Thank you, President. Yeah, yeah, tree limbs. Yes. Mr. Mays. Yeah, Mr. President. Ms. Poplar makes a point, um, but it's a big task. I know we go through budget process and they've been using the conservation district. Mm -hmm. When you call to get a tree cut, which I've had some trees cut in the first ward and I've had some trim, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. They use that conservation district right. to come out and assess it whether it should be trimmed or cut as a dead tree. 
And, um, you know, it would be the same thing with sidewalks that's growing, that's pulled up by um, tree right. branches growing up under there. We got to do a better job as it relates to tree trimming and um, mm -hmm. repairing sidewalks. That's a hazard. So I kind of agree. But um, it's kind of hard for me to um, punish people for some of the same things that we as property owners in the city um, violate. So um, any time when we pass these ordinances for legal purposes, it's an appeal process in here as well. And so I want people to understand that when they run into problems of what they might call a double standard, come to us, appeal, and see what we can do to work out and give more time. So I'm going to support it. Um, but at the same time, I do understand that it do seem somewhat hypocritical. And so I call, I, I want to make it public that if anybody is in violation of some of these ordinances, come to us and even utilize the internal appeal process in here and let's see what we can do to work this out for everybody involved. Is there a motion? I would move, Mr. President, I would move for the uh, adoption of, um, I'm going to turn back to the ordinance, I'm going to move for the adoption of 160550. Point four. Point four. Just, just the five five just zero. For, okay. Mm -hmm. It's been moved and supported. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Run, Madam Clerk, roll call. Ms. Popolo? Ms. Popolo? Ms. Popolo? No. No? Okay. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is uh, six yes, two no. Ma Madam Clerk? Mr. President, public comment. Yes. before we um, move to public comment, if I may, um, I went and discussed something with Mr. Gardner then. Before we move off of that Comcast, even though we have, I want to see if you'll entertain a motion I want to make as it relates to that point three five. I want to lay this to rest once and for all on where we stand as a group. I know that you've asked to speak to Mr. Jones and Mr. Um, Branch that came up, but I do remember hearing the administration kind of leave it open that they would work with the council. So I want to... Um, in light of all that's been said, I want to move that we fill in the blank with the point three five in the blank for the peg fee. And um, I want to see if that motion will pass or fail. So your motion is? To fill in the peg fee, fee blank with point three five. What, what, on the Comcast what section? contract. You know what section? Um, Mr. Gardner, what section would that be? Do we know? Section 8, eight something. Is that a 9? Eight. Section eight. 8. Something, Because we already did the franchise fee, correct? We, we did section six. We did the, the franchise week. fee. Yes. yes. So this That's is why I, I felt it was important to say what section right. so that it's, there's no confusion. And then we can lay that to rest once and fall. I think under section eight, there are, all, there are about 10 different subsections. Uh, And you said what, Ms. Willow? 
Section what? Eight. 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 It's Section 8A that she, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, the, we identified the section, correct? So Mr. Councilman Mays has made a motion okay. um, to um, fill in the blank. Okay, is there any, and, and, and is there any support? Is there any support? Support. So it's been moved and supported in discussion? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? It's my understanding, and I need to be corrected. It's my understanding that there is a, some language in the state law mm -hmm. that if you didn't have that in there prior to the, the previous contract, I guess, or the pre, in the previous contract that state law, uh, there's a state law that says you can't have it in this one. And so we might vote on it and vote it in. I'd like to have it, but if we vote it in there and the state law says that we can't, we are just, well, I heard that, but still, you can't preempt the law. And, and, and I'd like for him to work with us, but I, 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 I'm, I'm almost certain that, that that's. <laughs> but I think the state law says that if we didn't have it previously, we right. can't have it and now. That's what, what my discussion would have been with Mr. Branch then. Um, for the record, I'd like to clarify that too. I was under the impression that. The point zero three five could be received, but that the two percent could not be received. Correct. Based on some sort of the last contract would allow that much, but not for us to get the two percent. So okay. that's something. And then another question is the um, being able to administer, even if we received it. Okay. There's the question of being able to administer. Let, let me have employee. a representative from Comcast clear this, uh, because I've got two conflicting things here, mm -hmm. and I also had some conversation with the administration it's that I wanted to have further detail with. So It's going to be point three five, and it can be in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Push, push, push that red button. There you go. How's that? Yes. Okay, there we go. So it is section eight of the franchise agreement, the uniform mm -hmm. franchise agreement. And if you look at sub one, it says if there is an existing franchise on the effective date of the act, which would have been January 1 of 2007, the amount paid to the franchising entity. Um, by the incumbent with the largest number of subscribers, which would have been Comcast for us here. And then sub two, at the expiration of the existing franchise agreement, the amount required under one, which is, and then you'd fill in the same amount. So by the strict reading of the act, you would look back to the current franchise. It doesn't prohibit us from uh, providing for the additional. So that is why we've taken a look at the other types. It, the statute says to look to the fee paid. There is no fee paid under the current franchise. But because we did provide support in the form of a uh, fully equipped studio and an equipped van, we took the mon monetary value of those and then do calculated based on our gross revenues, and that's how we arrived at the 0.35. So we are able to come to that agreement to go to a 0.35. The, current agreement doesn't support beyond that. So a 2% that is listed in the agreement, actually what it says is that the amount under sub one above is not to exceed 2%. So the 2% that's in the statute is merely a cap. It, doesn't, it does direct us to go back to the current franchise. Just point of information, or I guess it's a question. Who, who pays that 0.35? Does Comcast, does Comcast pay it, or does Comcast collect it from those that are paying into the Comcast services? So the statute and industry practice is, says that um, it is a separate line item on the customer billing statement. So it is passed through directly to our customers. So the customers pay for it. That is correct. So it would be an increase in their cable bill. Sorry, that is correct. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. And again, I, 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 I understand and, and I've heard dialogue that is still my greatest concern, mm -hmm. that I am going into somebody's account and saying it's okay to issue and to take that out of my checking account or my savings account. No matter what dollar amount it is, I have a problem with that. I do. And so I understand my colleague's concern, and I understand Paul's concern, but I am not going to speak for the 11,000 people I represent and say it's okay to charge a higher bill payment. I'm not going to do that. And so, therefore, um, the motion's been made. There's some support. And if, however, my, my, and, and discussion going on, and anybody who want to discuss can discuss. But when it comes to that point there, I know what I am. So uh, I'm, I, that's my two cents. Anybody else has anything to say? Yeah, Mr. Mr. President. Mays, go right ahead. Yeah, Mr. President, like I say, we'll lay this to rest one way or another with a vote, yay or nay, right. from the legislative branch. But I paid my um, cable bill, Comcast. We got three boxes, three different rooms, landline, so forth and so on, and it was $232.32. 10% of that would have been $23. 1% of that would be about $2.30. So, 0.35% would be, it's getting tricky for me, but I'm going to give you an <laughs> estimate. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one third of the $2.30 the way I'm looking at it. So one third of $2.30 might be somewhere around, Mr. Woodson say 70 cents. Three times seven is 21, so it would be somewhere around 70, 75 percent. So that's about right. So I don't mind paying 75 cent extra a month on my bill in order to get a studio and cameras up at Northwestern, for example. Northwestern is a good high school, Southwestern or whatever. So I'll pay, just like I'll pay a millage for police, I'll pay a parks millage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play probably Keno. I don't too much do the three digit, But I'll play Keno, <laughs> 75 cent worth in a month. So when it comes to me, I can't speak for you, President <laughs> Nelson. That's correct. But I know me. You know, I even smoke cool miles. They $6 a pack. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to 75 cents mm -hmm. on my bill mm -hmm. to put a studio at Northwestern to do high school games, I looked at Davison, and they did almost a documentary. When Robert Bocock came in about the water, they was all over at Saints of God's Church. So I'm willing to invest that 75 cent a month. Um, and I am a Comcast um, customer. And so I'll see how this council vote on that. But that peg fee and that 0.35, I'm telling you, when you deal with public access, whether the studio was in City Hall, Northwestern, Mott College, Southwestern, or even at a senior center or a church. I don't want to blow this out of proportion. That's 75 cents a month, and everybody's bill ain't $232, like I just did the division on mine. Let's not trip out on the investment that we're going to make in the public access. Now, keep this in mind, and it might help your argument. The 5% that we get on the franchise fee that we've already voted on, that added to people's bills, the 5%. So you voted once, Mr. President, for a 5% increase on people's bills. Mm -hmm. And so now when it comes to the 0.35, that additional 75 cent, look at it this way. When it come budget time, will you take a 0.5% or Paul even said 1% of the 5% and allocate it specifically 
for the studio for Northwestern. We've been taking that 5% and putting it in the general fund. And that general fund money has went for police. When we get the budget, we're going to cut back. So I'm going to support it. And um, I ain't tripping off of what my colleagues do. But I think I've made it clear. And I think that as we turn the corner on this franchise mm -hmm. fee, uh, Mr. President, mm -hmm. and this franchise agreement, we gonna lay it to rest once and for all. So I want the residents of the city of Flint to know that I'm comfortable voting, and I'm gonna do it this way, Mr. President. I'm gonna vote for public access, and I'm gonna vote that me, if we get it, I really wanna see it in one of the schools. But at the same time, I don't mind a transparent government. Mm -hmm. And with the technology, I wish that it was a guy out of Indiana, and I'll end with this, Mr. President. This is a guy out of Indiana came to one of our meetings. His name was Dave. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let him know that our show spoke on it. Not only do he want these meetings live streamed, but he want to make those capital investments off of that peg fee where the community who looks at these meetings can vote and we as council people can look at what our constituents is saying as we make decisions. So he want to take this technology not only from just viewing Comcast and public access after the fact, but he want us to update and live stream meetings and be able to interact with our constituencies prior or at the same time that we make our vote. So this is 2016. I'm going for the 75 cent and being bringing us up to speed. And is this the 21st century? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. President. Ms. King. I, I just want to point out that if we collect the peg fee, that in order to do things, we have to use money out of the general fund. And the one and the one point two million dollars that we get in the general fund is already budgeted for police, fire, and things like that. So when you talk about taking money out of the franchise fee and using it for something else then that means that some of that money of that franchise fee that goes for police and fire and you know general city services maybe it'll be the 10,000 that we give the community centers maybe we just quit giving the community centers $10,000 out of the general fund and and put that aside for for public access i mean maybe the maybe the seniors in our community would rather sit home and watch tv instead of going to the community centers i don't know but I do know this, that we've never collected a peg fee in this community, and we've had public access. Other communities have public access, and those school districts pay for that stuff in those schools. Those schools don't get that money from Davison City Council. Them schools pay for that. So when we talk about the peg fee, and we talk about doing something with those dollars. And I'm not, I'm not tripping like Councilman May says one way or the other. Right. I'm just saying when it comes to the budget time, and we want to reduce that 1.2 or $3 million that we normally get that's used for police and fire, then we may have to lay off one police officer or one fire in, in order to be able to support that peg fee. I don't know, but I do know that you can't spend that money without using some of our general fund money. And I'm not will I'm personally not willing to increase any rates on any residents in the city of Flint at this time because we're all struggling. We are all struggling. And people are having a problem. There are 1,300 people that I think Councilman Mays pointed out that have passed water bills that are going to have to be caught up. I know my, my parents are on a fixed income. We have a lot of residents on a fixed income and you might not think 75 cents a month is a lot, 
but to people that are on a fixed income, it, it's a lot. I mean, it, it, it truly is a lot. So, I mean, I support public access. I think I was the one that advocated to put money in the budget for Mr. Herring to, to, to have our council meetings um, televised. But if Northern School wants to do a studio and they want to do that, then I think that's an obligation of the Flint School System, just like Davison. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and Mr. President. I, I also, Mr. Mason, I'll come yeah. to you, and then we can wrap this up and take your vote or however yeah. you want to do it. Um, I think that's what me and the administration was looking at. I mean, we really did not want to put a burden of expenses uh, in, uh, of higher, higher bills, no matter what the breakdown you know, may say, you may say it is. Um, if we had that system that you were talking about, Mr. Mays, where I could be hooked up to the third ward and they could automatically from their houses tell me how they feel about it, then I'll feel better doing it because I could have 800 said yes and 250 said no. But then I would have a census of it. But since we don't, I am not going to to go down that road. And I think that's what me and the administration were saying when we sit down. Not that we didn't want to see it or anything of that nature, but that's, that's all I'm saying. Now, Mr. Mason. Yeah, Mr. We'll President, as we get ready to vote, yeah. like I've said and Mr. Yeah. Kincaid said, I mean what I say, I ain't tripping. He say he ain't tripping, we ain't tripping. We're just gonna firm this up. Mm -hmm. Comcast ain't tripping neither, cause <laughs> I don't find they just wanna wrap up yeah. this agreement. But I do stick with my, um, my, my position, and I want to make sure, um, I'm not sure from the conversation I get that if we take in the .35 PEG, which can be used for capital expenditures for equipment like cameras and studios, I don't think that forces us to spend general fund money. The 5% franchise fee is totally separate from the .35. So I look at it not like what Mr. Kincaid said, and all due respect, Mr. Kincaid, I know that in reality you might have to have some additional monies or you might have to spend some in one year and spend some in the next year. But no way have I advocated that if we Mr. Gardner, am I saying something wrong here? You are. Okay, because I'm, 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 am I saying it right? The peg fee is capital expenditure money just for equipment and cameras and stuff like that. Okay. And it really has nothing to do with the 5% that we've been putting in the general fund. Right. Um, well, I think we might have been confused, Mr. Herring advocated that we could do some additional things out of the franchise fee, and we do now. We do some things right now out of our general fund and franchise fee, such as I think we did a $15,000 contract for Mr. Heron, and they need to hurry up and start paying him to handle Comcast. And so we did that now. There's no way I'm, I'm going to sit up here and let people believe that I'm out to take 10000 from a senior center or right. any money from the police department. Right. That ain't what I'm advocating, and, I'm not, and I haven't said that once. I wouldn't care if it took three years, five years, or six years in that 10-year contract. I'm advocating getting that technology money for peg fee whether the studio was at Northwestern or at City Hall. I said that. And so the Board of Education, they can count on me because I'm willing to work with the school board, the kids, the city, the Flint police, so forth and so on. So Mr. Kincaid, we getting ready to vote and I just wanted to come back behind you and clarify my I position. I ain't tripping, but I count good. You okay. want me to make a prediction of this vote? No, we're going to find out in a few minutes. All right. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay, Mr. Nelson. No, we're going to have, no have a roll call now. Right. Okay? Mr. Roll Nelson? Call. No. Mr. Davis? No. 
Mr. Winfrey? No. Ms. Ms. Galloway? No. Ms. Van Buren? No. Mr. Kincaid? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Poplar? No. The vote is uh, one yes and seven no. Okay. Public hearing. Mr. President. Public comments. Mr. Public Mr. President, comments, thank you for it. allowing me to get yes. that. The first public uh, comment, and th this is specifically as it relates to what's on the agenda only. Mr. Arthur Woodson? Mr. Woodson? Y'all should have done that for, for the community, uh, passed that, because it wasn't taking anything away from the general fund. My question is this. Uh, this, this paper, that uh, Comprehensive Rental Inspection Code, does the inspection code supposed to have the water affidavit in this, where if this, before they can pass ins inspection, they suppose uh, in order to turn the water on or have a water affidavit, does this supposed to be in there? Does, is that still uh, part of the ordinance or did y'all change that ordinance along with this right here? I don't really know what you're speaking of specifically. There's, I don't believe there's any um, site to a, a water affidavit with what's in the current ordinance or the previous ordinance. Well, it's an ordinance. It's an ordinance. Uh, the landlords get an inspection sheet. And in order, for them, in order for the water to be turned on, they have to come down here and get a water affidavit. They, uh, the tenant has to have a water affidavit in order for them to turn the water on. It was an ordinance that was done. The reason why I say this is because it was changed. Just point of information for Mr. Woodson. There's a separate ordinance on the water affidavit for, for rental property. Got it. A separate, a separate ordinance. All right. Now, let's, let's get to, uh, let's get to uh, this uh, resolution. Uh, where is it? The resolution for 160552. They're trying to turn downtown into a commercial rehabilitation district to where every company can apply for that big word, Oprah. Why isn't the whole city a Oprah? We have to pay taxes, property taxes. The people, residents have to pay property taxes. Why can't these business, why are they always asking the city of Flint uh, putting themselves in position to not have to pay taxes. That goes back to the top 1%. They, uh, if you look at the government, the top 1% received over 60% of the GDP here in the United States. These people downtown is receiving all this money and they, have, they, they are not putting one dime back into this community. Thank you, so Mr. why Wilson. do we keep on giving them giving them tax breaks. Thank you, I, you, Mr. Wilson. No, it's 15 seconds. No. Oh, see, y'all. Mr. President, I would ask that you give him a couple more minutes Well, since relax. Mr. Mays asked, go right ahead. Well, he took his yeah. three. No. Oh, oh, oh. No, I'm fine. I mean, oh, thank okay. you, uh, Mr. Mays, for uh, suggesting that. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Next speaker. <laughs> Next speaker is Mr. R.L. Mitchell. And again, each person has three minutes to speak. Good evening, Mr. Council. Uh, uh, what about, about this? Uh, oh, yeah. To the city attorney. Uh, about this uh, cable stuff. He just, he just talking about, uh, he just made me feel like a, a a omen. I suggest that you tell Mr. the cable man to give all the omens free cable TV and see what see where they accept it. The way he made us feel and Scott Kincaid talking about let the senior citizen stay home and watch TV and stuff made my councilman look like a a kangaroo over there by saying them smart remarks about hassle. Long up. I will stick, stick to the agenda. I will stick to the agenda. Okay. Okay. And back to you. City Attorney, like uh, 
I like I said, I've been here 40, 40 years in the city of Flint, and then I turned up downtown into uptown, coming down here, just gonna forget about the public and the peoples in the Flint and them college students and looking over the council like they ain't nothing and Miss Galloway helping them do it. Even she, she said, sitting on a seat, talking all that junk like the people don't count. And like, and grinning with them smirks on their faces when, when Councilman Mays tell them how to do his stuff. And Scotty over there, looking all, look at him, how he looking out. Like Hillberry Doughboy. Mitchell, all that, that is not on the agenda. And that's but, not appropriate. And, then, and, and she, and, and, look at her, how she talking all Mitchell, out. Mitchell. You know all that junk. R.L. R.L. Popular. That's enough. For talking about you, you're not trees talking about, in the You cannot sit Laredo. up here and These attack are, my colleagues. What, huh? No, sir. What? That's it. Man, what? I keep, that, man, I just, thank you. You are so welcome. Our next, next speaker, speaker is uh, Mrs. Annette Dusso. Mrs. Dusso. Mrs. Dusso. Okay. Is she here? She's gone. Okay. The next speaker is uh, Paul Herring. Paul. Yeah, Mr. President, I knew it wasn't a lot of speakers, so I was feeling like, you know. Good evening, Council. My name is Paul Herring, and as you can imagine, I'm disappointed. Mr. Nelson, I really wish you would have taken that position when you charged me $141 for my street lights. I didn't charge I really wish you would have taken that position when you charged me for Genesee Towers. I really would have wished, you know, because 70 cents is, is modest. And, and just to prove I'm not a sore loser, to prove that um, I still have hope, I still think we can do things to make this right, Scott, Comcast paid for Davidson Studios. Scott, Comcast paid for Swartz Creek Studios. Scott, Comcast paid for Grand Blank Studios. We've been collecting the 2% from AT&T. None of you guys are concerned about that burden on your constituents, or maybe you are, and you plan on reversing that. The school has stockpiled money. Hopefully, 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 you guys will seat the Telecommunications Advisory Commission. Hopefully, hopefully you will empower that organization to start spending that money. Because Mr. Kerry, we can put remote cameras everywhere for a fraction of the cost of 15 and 20 years ago. It's cheap. We can put cameras in Northwestern, Southwestern, the senior citizens centers and run them right out of that room with two people. Scott, you say you put 15K aside for public access? See if you can find another 15. That would pay two part-time people to run those remote cameras out of the back room right here in City Hall. This is not an expensive ordeal. Public access is supposed to be run and operated by volunteers. But if you got nobody training the volunteers and you got no equipment to give the volunteers, you really don't have a public access system. Scott, you say we got one. You know why we have one? Because I've kept it alive. I represent 10 producers here in the city of Flint. I take their program down to Detroit. It's because of us that Comcast exists or public access exists in spite of the city's abandonment. I think we've got an opportunity here. I hope you guys feel guilty enough about denying the citizens this wonderful opportunity that maybe when budget time comes around, you'll think about it. Maybe when the CDBG funding comes up, you'll think about it. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. And in all things purely social, we need to be as separate as the fingers, yet one as the hand in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Thank you. Madam Clerk, let me, let me say this, and because we, this is televised, and I don't want wrong communication going out. Since my name was called out, um, personally, Kerry Nelson was not responsible for the street light taxes nor Genesee Towers because I wasn't here. Now, what I am responsible for, I am accepting under my watch. And my watch says I'm not going to up anyone's bill that I can help. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk with the administration, this 2% that they're talking about at and T. I I don't know anything about it, but if it comes before this council, and if it's not right, 
And if I feel it's not right, I think Mr. Branch can tell you, I don't have a problem telling you about it. So I just want to make sure, because people watch that, and I don't want them to think that Carrie Nelson had anything to do with those two items. Mr. Okay? President. Appointments. Mr. President. Yeah. Real quick. Now, you must be more sensitive than me, because when they say my name, no. I don't really always get a chance to either. respond, but I'm going to say, you better toughen up like me, because I've well, been beat up out here. Oh, I, I'm, I'm used to that. I listen to 1420 on Saturday morning. I'm real tough. All right. I see. Okay. Appointment. Appointments. Um, <laughs> this is the reappointment of um, Attorney Lois Fletcher, Jr. To, to the Bishop Airport Authority Board for a term to expire December 31st, 2020. <laughs> Resolution number 160556. What's your pleasure? President no. Nelson, I move for the um, approval of the reappointment 160556. Support. Of okay, been moved and supported in discussion. Mr. President, this is um, Lois Fletcher, Jr., to the Bishop Airport Authority. That is true. That's true. And reappointment. Reappointment. A reappointment. Reappointment. The term would end December 31st of 216. Mm -hmm. 2020. The new term would go. go the, the one he's in now would end 216. 2020. The one he's in now the one, it expires. The one, constantly it, it, it expires the end of this month. Currently. This December 2016, yes. and then the new one would go to the 20. Right. Yes, 20, 2020. And this is coming from a recommendation of the administration, That's and then correct. we confirm it. The resolution was attached to your committee agenda. Okay, how many people on that Bishop Airport there Authority? There are nine people on the board. Nine. Five from the county, and it kind of rotates. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to support it. Okay, right. thanks. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Roll call. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nelson? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no. Passes. You say yes. eight? We don't have eight, do we? I'm sorry, seven yes. Okay. Brings Mr. us to the- I apologize. Oh, no. uh, master resolution, what's your pleasure? Move approval. Been moved, is there any support? support? Moved and supported, any discussion or separations about the master resolution? Uh, Hearing uh, none, roll uh, call. Yeah. Mr. Mays, you got something? No, I don't. Okay. Hearing uh, none, roll call, Madam Clerk, on the master resolution. Okay, Ms. Galloway? Mr. Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no on the master resolution. That puts us public speakers. Public yes. speakers, Madam Clark. Mm -hmm. Our first public speaker during this segment is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Mr. Woodson. Woodson. Is he gone already? He's gone. Okay. okay. The next so you give him more time, Mitchell. they leave. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Council, again. Good, Good evening. evening. And Happy New Year, if you make it through the, live through the New Year, Mr. President. I hope so. Oh, uh, about this land bank with the money. About the houses. Uh, I want, I want, I, I can't hardly talk straight because I ain't the, the, the city attorney ain't answered me straight yet. About, uh, about, see, You got me walking around with these bottles in my hand, and I want all my, I want to, I would like to have a check in my mailbox. This, this, before this year go out, to all my statisticians, I mean, who are, I can't hardly talk straight because, hey man, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to all y'all, and, and Miss Galloway, keep listening to my council. Men maze, and you won't go wrong with your with your uh, ward. Now, take that. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Mr. Paul Herring. Mr. Mr. Herring. Herring. I'm back. 
Listen, guys, I know I, I would have been remiss if I did not encourage, invite the citizens, yourselves, and the audience to participate in this year's Kwanzaa celebration. It will be held at Marion Hall from, three, uh, from 12 to 3 o'clock. Uh, that's 529. Uh, ML King Avenue, the um, CBOP organization and many other folks are putting it on for the community. I'm sure they would love your support. If you guys want more information on the Kwanzaa celebration and the activities involved with it, you can feel free to give me a call at 810-239-2901. This is the last council meeting before the holidays, correct? That's correct. All right, so I'm going to give you a Christmas present and I'm going to walk away without doing my speech. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Happy having Our last speaker is Mrs. Uh, Nancy Berger. Ms. Mrs. Berger. Berger. Good evening, Good Nancy evening. Berger. I want to thank Mays for uh, two things, talking to Alan tonight. Um, he became very ill, so he did have to leave. Um, he did want to say thank you for discussing and talking to him this evening. Um, uh, first off, um, first part of my meeting, I did want to talk because I've had my water tested with the filter on and um, very high in uh, bacteria. And uh, they came out to my home and discussed it with me because I was at the library when they were talking about it and I did not have my test results back at the time. So they came out to my home today and uh, discussed them with me. And uh, I had some growth on my actual filter unit, which they replaced on uh, September 26th, the second time that they had come out to my home. They replaced the whole unit. And within one month after me repeatedly telling them that I have to change uh, my filters every month because my water uh, filter seems to go bad within one month of use. They said, well, that's kind of funny. So they, they wrote it down, they documented it. Well, after one month of use with that brand new mechanism that I put on uh, while they were there, um, there was growth on it. I immediately took that filter off, put it in a box, and sent it on it. Uh, Put it, set it aside so that when we had this meeting or I got this phone call about this documentation, I could talk with Nancy Love, which is the director here, um, that I could, you know, set up a time that I could speak with her and show her that. Uh, they took it today and they're going to be testing that to find out what it is because it's kind of a reddish color. I asked her about it being rust because somebody told me it was rust. No way can rust grow on plastic. So it's kind of a plastic uh, coating on it. They said, no, it is not rust. It's some type of bacteria. But they're going to be further testing it, and then they will inform me to let me know. But I do have both testings. Um, but they did not uh, inform me to not run my water since they did come in later in the day so that they said my lead levels were somewhat lower than what Virginia Tech had come out to my home earlier in the uh, month before in the day to uh, check my lead levels, which were at 30. Um, so uh, that is one of the reasons why they said my test came back uh, better than uh, Virginia Tech's did. Um, but back to another part. You can sum it up for me. You okay, real quickly. Um, yes, I do have, oh, I do, we, myself and George has a, uh, another home, and you do know this, and you also, because you are the council member over there, but a gentleman, the, a good friend of ours, bought the home. I have to pay the home back. We have to pay this gentleman back. Um, that is why Eric Mays knows we have another home. Um, but... The home that we were in was bought and paid for. The landlord or the owner, the previous owner of the park, did not take care of the park, lived out of state. This woman here, uh, attorney here, knows of the owners at the time. Now, the land bank 
I have talked to two different people at Land Bank, which is head of Land Bank, does not take possession of the mobile home park until January 2nd. I have talked to the two people that is head of Land Bank. They do not take possession until January 2nd. And I do have that um, person I spoke to, the two people that I spoke to, and I do have that person that I spoke with name and their phone number. So if anybody would like those names, I can definitely give it to you. And there is a person here that went with me to one of the meetings that I sat down and talked with them. They didn't even know at the point when we sat down and talked with her that it was in court. Okay, so, thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Happy Merry you, Christmas could, and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Nancy, could you give those two names first of all to your council person? And then he'll he'll distribute them to us, okay? Okay. Miss Galloway. Thank you very much. Uh, Miss Miss Galloway, since you have to leave, I'm gonna let you start off, and then I'm gonna switch back to council. But let me re say something. Real oh, quick. oh, okay. Mr. President, let me say this on the record as it relates to Miss Nancy Berger. Uh -huh. I don't think Miss Nancy Berger is a bad lady. Okay. No matter what she say or have said about me, I look at people individually. And so with Miss Berger, the way I know her, even though she didn't bang me up, I'm kind of a, you know, rugged politician. And I won't give everybody the same type of communication. But I want you to know, Mr. President, the council, that I'm going to give Miss Berger a, a break on that because I think she'd been around some people and going through some frustration. So I'm going to let Miss Berger beat me up and she can beat me up again and I might give her another pass. But I deal with people individually. So I just wanted for the record to say to Miss Berger and to the council and to the public that I'm, I've chose her out to treat her differently than some of these other folks that want to beat up on Councilman Mays. But I don't, but you can keep beating me up. I'm okay with you. I know you. It's the holiday. Don't y'all get messy with me around here. So that's Miss Berger. God bless you. Now, do you have your, you ready to do your five minutes? No, I just, I just, he just did. The phone number, so whoever, Miss Berger. Okay, well, Miss Berger, we'll give it to you. Remember, I do set on the land. Yes, you do. You do. Haven't been there for a minute, but I do sit yeah. and they do answer my phone calls. Okay. So I would like to Ms. Berger. Get, get okay. the numbers. Now. But clearly I want Ms. Berger to know we can go in a knockdown drag out, but you know, I just know how yeah. she's doing. Huh? Well, Mays, go ahead and do your... Go ahead. Oh, so Ms. Galloway wants yeah, me yeah, to go yeah, first. Yeah. I would say this, as we come to the, as we come to the close of this 2016 year, it's been an interesting year. It's been an interesting two years. And so on the last day of our last council meeting, I gave Ms. Brown, the clerk, a memo that I received this morning from um, the press release, four more officials charged in third round of Flint Water crisis criminal investigation. And I'm asking that Ms. Brown put a copy of this in each of the council members' mailbox. Even though it's going to be a widespread story, it's not over yet. This morning you had emergency manager Donnie Early charged with a possible 20-year felony, Mr. Ambrose. Howard Croft, as well as Doherty Duffy Johnson. And I feel bad for two or three of them, just as you heard me talk about Miss Berger, because sometimes people can get caught up down here. Now, I don't want to get caught up down here in City Hall. I thought it was wrong when Mr. Early and others wrongfully charged me with multiple misdemeanors, and now here I look, ain't on bond, and I'm seeing them getting arraigned for felonies. And you're not going to see me talk about, even though I'm saying the K word or a C word, comma, 
But I didn't believe and don't believe in emergency managers. I believe in democracy. I believe eight and nine and ten heads in government is better than one. I don't believe in dictatorships. And I'm hoping that Mr. Trump takes a close look at what can happen here in Flint, Michigan as he get ready to govern. Government ain't a plaything. And I learned today, and I'll wrap it up, I appreciate your courtesy, um, Councilwoman Galloway, and then I'm gonna wrap up and wish y'all a Merry Christmas in the city of Flint. But I learned today something that I had already looked at. It's called a administrative consent order. In other words, people now in Shooty's office in the investigation is looking at the bond and the administrative consent order that got the $85 million bond on the city of Flint's part as like a fraud. In other words, it was a small minor problem sludge or some going into a lagoon. I first read about it in the Detroit Free Press and they issued what I'm gonna call a suspicious administrative consent order from the MDEQ. And they put it on the prospectus for investors and bonds were issued. And they're the birth of the KWA. So it's going to be some further investigations. It's going to be nervous people as to who knew what, who did what, and that's why I always tell us to do what we should do. So I would say my heart go out for people being charged. But people sit and watch me. I had to represent myself, Mr. Kincaid, say who going to pay these legal fees. It's more charges, in my opinion, to come. People need to be held accountable. Yes. Don't take this government lightly when you're in it, because we have to look out for the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the city of Flint. We took oath. I would say Merry Christmas to everybody. You'll see this after Christmas, but it'll be proper to say Happy New Year to the residents of the city of Flint. And I'm asking all them Councilman Mays haters in 2017, ease up because I'm gonna get my energy up and if y'all keep hating on me, I'm gonna fight back. God bless you. God bless you. Ms. Poplar. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I wanna say thank everyone for coming out in this cold enjoying your city, making your voices be heard. In the year of 2016, we may not have all agreed, but we disagreed and we agreed again. And at the end of the day, at the end of the week, it's still about the people. And junk is always stuff. So we can't go home with a hating heart against one another. And I hope that in 2017, that the city of Flint can come together to make our city just a little bit better. My prayer is New Year's Eve. Leave your oozies, koozies, and whatever you got in your pocket in your dresser drawer, in a locked cabinet. And when 12 o'clock comes, give someone a hug and say, I love you. Because it's going to take a lot of love to get through not just 2017, but the next four years. The next four years is not going to be a joke. So I'm just praying that if we can love each other and respect each other just a little bit more, then we can pull each other through because it's going to take each other to get through. 
and I am very serious on this, very serious. Thank everyone for the support that I had on my two surgeries. I've come through by the grace of God. I have a new knee, I have a new hip, and some people say, well, she ain't worth nothing. But I know I'm worth $125,000 as I sit in this seat. <laughs> so run and tell that. To my colleagues, I want you to have a wonderful Christmas, a happy new year. Some of you I may see and talk to you over the holidays. But just enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Just enjoy yourselves, because remember, at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of junk that you can't do much about. So don't argue, don't fight. Just give a little love, and we'll all be okay. So I thank you so much for all that you have done for the city. My colleagues, my constituents, and all of you that come to this council meeting, thank you so much. Winfrey. Councilman Winfrey, it's on you. Thank you, Mr. President. To all of the citizens of Flint and certainly to all of my colleagues, I wish you a, a happy holidays, safe holidays, and, and just enjoy, as, as my colleague said, just enjoy yourselves and be safe. Thank you. Right. Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you. Um, the same sentiments and also, um, in addition to that, um, check in on somebody that, that you haven't maybe checked in on in a while. Some of our um, seniors are homebound, so some of those that we um, may be aware that might need something during the holiday. And um, I just agree with everybody else. Just love on your family because um, tomorrow is not promised. We um, buried a very close friend. She was only 51 years old. And last year at this time, she was in you know great health. And so just, um, just try not to take anything for granted and just um, love on your family and be safe during the holiday season. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Van Buren? She had no okay, Councilman Kin Kincaid? Yeah, Mr. President, mm -hmm. I just wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a very safe holiday. Yes. And God bless uh, everyone in our community. Thank you. Thank you. And in closing, I would like to say to my colleagues, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And for um, electing me a second go around as your president, certainly we all are individuals. We don't agree all the time, but we have one common goal, and that's to make sure the people that, we're, that we represent get the best out of any situation that we find ourselves into. We're so thankful for the $100 million um, that this city has received from the um, federal government, and we're so glad that President Obama and Senator Stabenow and Congressman Kildee and Senator Peters uh, fought so hard to get it, and we understand, we appreciate the mayor going to Washington, but we know those three had to roll their sleeves and go across the aisles and fight, and uh, Senator Stabenow told me she wasn't going home until they got some type of funding for Flint, Michigan, and when you have people out there fighting for you like that, that means so much. And to all of you that are, res that are citizens of Flint and in the nearby areas, um, be very careful, have a blessed holiday and a safe one. And I want to say to you this December 23rd, it's difficult for me doing holidays, will be 20 years since my mother went home to be with the Lord. And still, it is very difficult. And I'm saying to you, Councilman Mays, you hold on and hang in there. If you don't believe nothing else, believe that. I know, uh, and it's rough here at the holiday time. But I, I appreciate all of you for what you do. You make me feel good when I don't feel the best. I put some long hours in, and I appreciate your support. Councilman Winfrey, enjoy your family in Florida as you travel. It's a blessing. Have a safe one. Don't eat too much, but enjoy yourself. All right? Mr. To all of you. Yes. Mr. President, before I move to adjourn, I got two questions. One, should we stay here another two hours and figure out how to spend the hundred million? No. If that answer is no, no. are you going to sing 
before we leave, I'm and on that the answer is no. No, and that answer is I no. would move to adjourn. We adjourn. Oh. <laughs>